Shalom, shalom, everyone. So welcome. Welcome to this day. And I want to do this today on Friday because this is such an unbelievable day. And it really saddens my heart in one way that really interestingly, 99% of the world does not know symbolically what today is. Today is Hoshana Rabaha. Okay. Forgive me if I didn't say it perfectly, but it is the last great day of the feast. It's one of the most prophetic things that Yeshua did, that Jesus did. He fulfilled this mitzvah. He was fulfilling this particular mitzvah that was being done by the Jews in Jerusalem on the day and had been done for centuries and has been done for thousands of years since Sinai. This is such an important, but the thing that is so exciting, it's sad in one way because a lot of people, it's psh, this is how unplugged we are from our Yahweh Elohim, from his times and seasons, but also from the deep meaning of this. And so I want to just go into some of the deep meaning of today, because in truth, if you're, whatever you hear this, if you hear it during this season, you know, we don't know the day or hour in the, but I want to say this because of the Jewish calendar, it's today. But if you were following a different calendar or even the scene calendar, it's still quite a few days away. So there is a zone. So just listen to the information I have. And then if you want to wave a lulav, okay, if you want to build it and wave it and partake in the ritual, which is what it is, it's not bad, but what it symbolizes because you are making an absolute divine connection and what it means. So when Yeshua went into the temple, it says it in John 7, 2, he went into the temple during the, well, he was told his brother, his brother men, I guess you would say, he's kind of asking him up north, are you going down to the feast? And he was, Yeshua kept all the feasts. So you're going down to the feast in Jerusalem, for the feast of tabernacles, the feast of booths, this time right now, Sukkot. And he said, I'm not going down now. I, I um, will not reveal myself publicly. And there's a whole exchange. But the point is he did go down and he did show up in the temple on this day when they are doing this particular mitzvah of waving of, and uh, waving the love and also of the water libation. And so I want to go through this, some of these things. But what, let me just make some overarching points. The thing that's so exciting about today, and once this is a universal feast, ultimately the feasts of Yahweh Elohim are going to fill the whole earth, and his glory will be known by what is packed into these Mohadim. This is part of it. But this is a universal feast because this is the true time where, it, at the end of the age, when it's all wrapped up and Elohim is dwelling, we are dwelling with him. He is dwelling with us and our sukkah, it's called sukkot, you know, it's kind of su for and coat. It has many levels of meaning. Let me just say this, you know that I teach on the level of parts, which means that the scripture is written on many levels. So obviously there's a literal level. That's why we're going to talk about a literal lemon. <laughs> but what does that mean? What is, what is the spiritual essence in our mind that we want to get from this? All right. And from all of these waving you know, the, the leafy uh, palm, whatever. So we're going to get to that. So there is that literal level, but there is so much deeper and it's all talking about us on our inside. When we dwell with the father, when the whole earth, this is my Sukkot, this is my prayer shawl. But the whole concept is you get inside. Let's go inside ourselves with the father. Let's dwell together during this and see what the great thing that Yeshua did for us on this. So, because this is the last feast, the last day of the great feast, this is when it's all wrapped up and the father is dwelling on earth with his people. And when I say the father, I mean, there's many levels of understanding to that too. But the point is people, we need to be ready because this, these are true spiritual realities. And someday, very, very soon, these realities are going to crash through into our realities. And it's going to be, I was liking it to the game of musical chairs. You know, when that trumpet sounds and then they shut the music off. And if you don't get a chair in time, <laughs> it's not may not be pretty for you. Anyways, this is a time, the unity. See, you wave just to give you because the lulav is com the lulav is composed of four um, things from the plant kingdom. All right. And they each represent a part of us. They represent seriously our bodies our souls and our spirits. 
which I have been teaching a lot in the Hebrew, people understand, these are three different Hebrew words, and they have three different absolute references to our, our makeup as our body, our soul, and our spirit. The text of the Bible, the Tanakh, you know, the Torah, how we want to reference it, is the most psychologically accurate book on the planet in my opinion, when it's understood correctly, the information that is being told. So as we become at peace, dwelling with the Prince of Peace, Shar Shalom, on this final time at the last day of the feast, when our bodies, our souls, and our spirits, our minds, and, and with this word spirit today, you really should think a little bit more towards our intelligence, our mentality, what we believe, what we think is true. In other words, it's the truth that is in our mind that has nothing to do with our emotional level. Okay, so when I say it's your soul life, your emotional level, which is kind of, <laughs> you know, up and down, up in our mind, truth is stable. It doesn't change. He always says it doesn't change. But our emotional life and, of course, our bodies, and our bodies are prone to decay too, to dying. So there's a lot of deep information and in how these different parts of us are finally going to be unified, rectified, resurrected, given in immortality. This is the promise. And we will all have a Sukkot dwelling in our little Sukkots with the Father for all eternity. I mean, and, and if we can get our minds out of these, these kind of clouds, there's so much more concreteness to this on being an immortal being. Our text really. So let's just go through this a little bit. So there are four kinds and they represent various types of souls. Let's just talk about that level. Now, this is pretty interesting. Listen to this. Which type of, so we have, let me just go, it's a citrus, okay, which is represents a fruit. Uh, there's the palm, I've got like a palm branch here, but the palm tree, which represents like, a, it's a very stiff, it represents like a bone, a spine, a very straight, the leafy, there's the leafy fronds, leafy um, trees that come, and then a flowering. Now mine are of course not native in Israel, I don't have the real, but the point is it's really representing four different types of plant in the plant kingdom, how they classify. Just like I'm classifying my body, my soul, and my spirit. And if you are born, of, of, again, you have a connection, you have the father, you are a son of the father. All right, so you are a fourfold complete being. Uh, so this part, so there are four kinds of souls, though. It talks about this represented in a lot of these. There is one called, there is one, the etrog, which is the, the yellow, it's the bright, it, it's the, well, there's a lot about this, you could say, but what I want to say in terms of soul, it represents those souls that have Torah, Torah learning and good deeds. See, remember it says in that, 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 you know, that they will come, the that there will be trees that will yield fruit in 12 seasons and that people will come in. That's an analogy of the fruit of the spirit that we would grow. And that fruit, it is the fruit that is the sweetest. You would have those with Torah learning and good deeds, the highest level of representation in the kingdom of the vegetables, right? Then you would have the, the, the date or a pine well it's see like bamboo they would use you would use celery if you were making it out of you know kitchen kind of vegetables but the date is those who have torah but no good deeds i mean all of us at different points could probably say that we've had this in our soul and i mean we we, we would exemplify some of this that that there are those that have neither torah nor deeds which is represented by I think the leafy one, those who have, who have neither Torah nor, nor good deeds. And then those are, there are those who have deeds, but no Torah, you know, and that's a real problem today in a lot of sense, because there's so many people, and I do call it compassion porn, who, who just in their heart, they just want to do good. They want good to prevail, but they don't. This is what James is trying to say in the book that you need deeds that are Torah consistent with with the concept of Torah. You can't just pick what deeds you think are good or bad. They're very clearly delineated, starting with the Ten Commandments. So if you can have, you can have any combination of those, but doesn't that awesome, the Father, listen to me, people, there's a great mystery in this. He will bundle them all together. 
But see, the thing is, we are bundled all together. We are at the end of the age. The other part of this day is that it is the day, the last day of the great judgment. See, one of the things with Christians, and I know this because and I'm a Christian technically, but I have such a love and a passion on understanding and now beginning lifestyle of understanding by Jewish heritage because the Jews have kept this for us. That was part of their covenant. They have fulfilled their part of the covenant. All right. And so in order to find out, we're going to go back there and we're going to see what they're doing today. In Jerusalem, there's a huge, my friend Brenda was telling me, she'd seen it on TV, a huge parade of all nations together, shaking the look, doing a parade of profession, and all the nations are there being represented on this feast because this feast really does represent everyone's in gathering. Believe me, there's going to be a judgment that's going to, everyone's going to face. All right. And so, where is your soul on those Torah, on those different levels of soul? Um, now, the, one of the interesting things too, let me switch, I'm going to switch around a couple of things, but I did want to make this point. In the research, it said the pilgrims, and this makes perfect sense to me because everybody's always trying to figure out where did Thanksgiving come from, from was an American, right? Where do we get this holiday? And you, you get a million answers, right? But this one really made total sense to me because it says that when the pilgrims were here in the fall and like that, I'm saying because they were so deeply biblically literate. I don't want to go off on a tangent on this, but I think people need to understand our founding fathers and those early generations of people that founded this nation with incredible values that were all Torah based. They were all extremely biblical literate. And they understood the Feast of Sukkot. They understood what this was as, an, as a day of, of an ingathering and as a day of judgment and as a day of thanksgiving. Because if you, as, as your soul, if you have gone through the process of repentance and return, and now you know the Father will forgive because that's what he says. If you repent and return to me, I'm going to forgive you. So that's the whole point where we can all come and we can all dwell uh, with the Father in the millennium in this sense, but um, they knew that. And that's why they instituted, that's why they called the, 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 the Indians together. That's why they all came together at that time because they had survived the voyage. They had been able to raise some crops. They had survived and they were very thankful and they were going to use this holiday and this day to give thanks. Now that makes total sense and fits with exactly who these people were. So just wanted to throw that in. So the waving of the lulav again, we're using the, the, the etrog, which is a fruit, really. It's a citrus, but we're talking about a fruit. The willow is the green and leafy, like just straight, no fruit. It wouldn't have, um, and it wouldn't have a flowering. Then you would have a flowering, uh, like they say the myrtle branches. So the willow branches would be the green leafy. You would have a myrtle branch, which would be the flowering trees. And then you would have a palm or a date palm, something stiff like a bamboo, which represents the spine. Now the thing that's, let's, let's get out of the vegetable kingdom. This is really talking about, this is some deep stuff because you people know, I study the Zohar, I study the deep Jewish mystical writings of our great Torah sages, prophets, and our, our master rabbi, Yeshua himself, Yeshua HaMashiach, Paul. These people were all totally, totally immersed in understanding in, in the mysticism, in the spirituality of their particular religion. That's how they could do what they did, personally, um, with a deep understanding of the meta, the, the, the physical, the metaphysical nature of our Elohim. But there were six, um, well, I know during the week they add branches and this is so that the, I think on the sixth, the seventh day, you're actually gonna have three myrtles, two, let's see, it'd be, it would be two willows and three flowering uh, plants and one, one bamboo or one uh, palm leaf and then one entron. But these are the four species and they represent, see, this is where we're told to bring our whole body, soul, and spirit. See, one part with religion that's just trying to get a bunch of do's and don'ts and not transform the heart. And the heart just stays all emotional and sappy and doesn't, doesn't get to be ruled by absolute truth, standards that don't change, that we need to conform to. 
not the other way around. If we don't make that integration according to Torah, all right, this is where all of those factors are going to be weighed in at the judgment. And, you know, some are going to be found wanting. <laughs> As I said, even the, go back to the original representing four different kinds of souls. So, but the point is the father is going to gather us together. And we know that he is going to um, dwell with us. That is the whole promise of the money. And, and that he know, we know that he is going to take away, and this is an even bigger, a deeper mystery. In, 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 the, sixth, in the first chapter of Genesis, it talks about the six days of creation. He, the father made six species of living souls. This gets really, and this is angelic orders. This gets into all the different things, everything that's out there. He made the Adam, what we are, on the last day, on the sixth day, okay? And then you have, you, then you would be a seventh day of rest. But he's making this covenant. He's wearing these four species, not six. There's a lot of deep mystery in that. But it's also surprising that he's going to put away, quote unquote, one of those natures that is called species, it's called the evil, one of those species, it's called the evil inclination. It's really the, those on the left side of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. These are the, these are those are the vessels that are fitted for destruction. There's some very, does that make sense? There's some very deep stuff. Okay, so though that's who, when Yeshua, when they said to him, have you come to judge us before the time? Like they, there's whole pox that know their judgment's coming and rightly so and deservedly so. But there are, there are way more that will be in this ingathering and this great um, time of, of dwelling. But be, before you can get there, you have to go through and you have to go through Yesod on the tree of love. You have to go through and it is almost, this is what death represents and to a certain extent, to a birth canal into a larger, into a unification of the heavens and the earth. So in other words, we can get connected back up into our immortality from which we fell. And then we can, we can show the Father's glory in our mortality if we choose. I mean, I just think that this, there's no end. It says, I has not seen and ear has not heard. I mean, you can't comprehend it, really. I don't think our brain, we, the, the glory and the splendor and the amazingness of what it's going to be. But this is important to understand that these three species or the form represent our spine. And you know how important the spine is in the body, in the structure. Everything comes out of the spine. I mean, it is the command central, everything. It holds everything together. It's the complete structure. You have the spine, the mouth. So the willow leaves is our mouth. I mean, it says life and death are in the power of the mouth. Think about that for a second. That'll put the fear of, there is, then the eyes are represented by the flowering trees. Our eyes, you know, and be careful little eyes what you see, be careful little ears what you hear. I mean, this whole concept, and, and then the heart. And this citron, this is the heart. And it's out of the heart really come the issues of life. And what does Yeshua want? He wants everything. What is the following? To love him with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We need to be integrated people that take Torah seriously on all levels because our Torah is written to cleanse us and purify us on all of those levels and to elevate us actually to be able to live. And there are many righteous Sadiq who's done this, Yeshua, Elijah, Moshe, all of these people have testimonies of how supra, meta, meta naturally they lived and the miracles and the things that performed. You know, and even many great saints, even in the Christian tradition, I mean, faith is a powerful force, a powerful mover. Faith with deep, well, it's dot knowledge, belief and understanding is an unbelievable force. But let's go back to this. So one of the things that you do when you is, is in this ritual, and one of the things, again, I want to try to stress with people is not to be afraid. Tradition and ritual are not inherently bad. <laughs> they have the potential like anything else. You know, food is anything that, you know, liquor, it's not inherent. I mean, a glass of wine is not inherently bad. It's in Yeshua was with people that drank wine, you know, when, but the point is excess. It's always, it's always the balance. But the point is when you take uh, all of this together and Yeshua was saying, oh, I was going to say on the judgment. Where did I see? Wait, 
about the judgment here because hold on i wanted to finish that because this is the last day because it starts with rosh hashanah see the fall feast and this is what's the saddest thing is it's christians when we don't get on these feasts we don't understand i mean i don't care if people do christmas or Easter, whatever you know because we all but the point is you a christian me really doesn't have an excuse to not know the depth, the spiritualness of what's going on in these festivals and apply it to there, because that's what Yeshua taught. He used all of them as lessons to teach. And so when he is there on the last day of the feast, this day, and they're doing the water libation, which is they're pouring water from the pool of Shalom, which we've all heard of him. He was, and, they, and they bring it up to the Temple Mount and they pour it. And, and Yeshua stands and he says, I am, because, you know, he says, I am the living water and whoever drinks from this living water will never thirst. But as he is in an, in an embodiment of, you know, our Mashiach, he is saying, you come to me, what would we come to? I mean, he's dead. You can't come to him in a sense. In our minds, in our understandings, in the way we perceive truth and in relationship. And in how we live our lives so that we become so Christos, that's why they call him Jesus Christ or Yeshua, the Mashiach. It's emphasis is on the word Mashiach, which means he is the anointed one. His teachings, his his ability to be checked, to be life. You know, he says, I lay down my life and I take it up again. Why? Because I am, you know, I am life. He is the truth. This this understanding that he had. Uh, produce has changed the world and as we grasp it now it's every, different people are going at different speeds <laughs> you know factor all that in but the point is this is the seventh day of the seventh festival and you just got to understand how these things cycle and how seven is a bundle it's like an energy but all you take all that knowledge that is and that is the complete package story of the plan of salvation over six thousand years including past history, because there is a past history, a <laughs> big one, and future history, even to the time when time will be no more. So this represents the final judgment, because when it starts at Rosh Hashanah, when the trumpet is blown and it's a sound to call the people to remembrance, Oh my gosh, we're on an appointed feast day. We need to pay attention there because the gates of heaven are opening. This is a season. Remember people, for everything there is a season. There's, it's a reason why this is the festival is at the in the fall season, in the harvest season, in an in-gathering in the last of the three festival or the last of the three harvests, okay? It's not, and none of this is an accident because this is exactly what's being portrayed. So this judgment represents the final judgment when each person receives the end of his faith. See, the extent of the salvation of his soul. Everybody will be rewarded according to their works. What are their works, people? I mean, seriously, are we talking about dead works? No, we're talking about the works of Elohim where he expects you. And it takes work to work out your salvation to not lie or cheat or steal or to say sexually pure in this culture today. You know, even mentally pure from pornography. I mean, it takes a lot of work on one sense, but the Torah is written so that these particular, the mitzvahs, staying connected to things that connect you to remembering and acting on the Torah, that is an extremely important lifestyle connection that we need to get back to. And that's what a lot of these festivals do. The spiritual energy, the insight, the wisdom, the fellowship. You know, you're not alone. I mean, Sukkot was huge. It was just and the biggest family festival for kids. It's just, it is, it's the most universal festival. And there's no limit to how much fun you can make it and how much joy you can have. Because our journey, our exile is over. All parts of us have finally been gathered back together in one immortal being that shines to whatever brightness it's going to for all, you know, and they say the heavens for where nothing's hidden. So if all heaven and earth are gonna see our brightness and what really we're made of. It's a really, it's very sobering. It's very real. I have no doubt to take it literal on many levels, but literally in a spiritual sense. So um, 
but what they do is on the last day of the, um, the, the, the judgment, they strike the ground five times. That's what you do with your lulav. You put it together. You, you have the, the citron, the etron in your left hand and your leafy palms in your right hand. And I'm not going to do, you can go online and just, and watch. I mean, it, you can get everything from hip hop, <laughs> you know, uh, dancing uh, rabbis to um, very traditional Orthodox, but the concept, you know, you strike the guy five times. Why do you think, you know, where do you think they can get the beating of the heart? Your heart, what are you beating? You beat the ground, you beat the heart. They're actually representing the same thing, that part of us. We need to repent. We are but dust. All of these different parts of us are gonna go back to, and we are, we need to acknowledge our maker and we need to just acknowledge our sins. We need to just return. The father is not asking and and you know you're obviously there's a lot of grace but the point is it's to turn there are so many millions of christians all around the world turning during these festival times it's so exciting i mean it's happening we really are getting close to a paradigm shift so i just wanted to encourage everyone to dig deeper but i just wanted let me just look at my notes here make sure that i kind of covered that the uh Yo, this is the other thing because, all right, there's another level of meaning here. And this is important to understand too, because obviously it's not the last judgment. We go through these cycles. They've been going thousands of years, right? I mean, and yet it's never been quote unquote the end of the world yet, right? <laughs> and this one doesn't look like it's going to happen. It's already what, all right. So the point is, yes, but what can't, what will you, just because, okay, so let's put it this way. What's the prize when you don't get the real prize but you compensation prize there's a word for it um we will get rain the father promises abundant rain for the coming year so then the jews understand if you have made yourself right i mean what is wrong with an absolute community of saints holy ones sadi coming together every year making themselves pure and holy and humble before the father and each other and committing anew you know to do better to live more torah and then, and then to go out and know that you are cleansed and you have nothing but abundance and blessing to look forward to, because that's the promise. If you love me and obey my commandments, you know, if you love, I'll, I'll bless you. That's all of, that's the whole point. The blessings will come. So they, so it, it also mean it's a rain holiday and that they pray for rain and the rain always symbolizes. Remember Yeshua said, I'm the living water, earth, nothing cannot cannot live without water this is the primary thing you have to have earth you have to have water and you have to have you know a seat you gotta have something you're working on there so the point is, but you have to have the water and he is the living water and it's coming to i mean this is what christians yes no matter where you are in your journey it doesn't really matter just as long as you're pointed in the right direction <laughs> looking up and up you know and really in the sense of Think of it not so much out there in outer space, but look up inside of yourself. Start with your body, which is represented by your liver. Look at your lifestyles. You know, are you eating clean? I mean, I'm saying, I don't mean, you know, you got to have a kitchen, a kosher kitchen. But today, and most people got to understand today's food, the way it is, we got to begin to pay attention to what it means to eat living, live food, clean food real food right and then everything else that goes with that all the lifestyles the enemy is 100 percent trying to put us under this this grid of this this artificial which is really i was looking at, it's really the artificer there's an artificer it's such an interesting play on words who is making a grid for us that has nothing to do with nature it's a whole different cycle it's a whole different beat it's artificial light it's artificial sound it's artificial everything this is not good for people to and this is leading to a lot of so i don't want to get up down that rabbit trail but <laughs> so one of the reasons is we pray now come out of this be happy be joyful because you've been promised rain he will bless you abundantly you know the father will provide he will keep sickness and disease from our door and the sense of you know everyone has a time to there i know there's a pandemic out there and things are happening but what do you you got to choose life choose you this day even if it's eternal life because of circumstances it brings you to that paul even says hey you know to, if i die today fine i'm with the lord that's actually quite better <laughs> so what have we got to be afraid of 
We have a big job to do. There's a huge harvest out there. You think masking and social distancing is going to announce the coming of the king? That's not what I'm going to be doing. Oh my gosh, I'm getting myself in trouble. But seriously and truly, I am certain. I hope I am not wearing a mask. <laughs> Oh, Father, help us all. Help us all. So um, I think on that note, because he dwells with us and we know Yeshua is our salvation. We're going to pray and believe for this rain. Yep. This even Joseph has called this the very most sacred day of the year. Yeshua, you know, he said, I am the living waters. That's in John 7. It's in John 4. It's in a couple of places. So because we are coming up on the end of the age, all the indicators are there. What a glorious thing. I'll see you hopefully in a Sukkot. Every mm -hmm. time we circle this mountain, we're going to get closer and better and um, more ritualistically pure and holy. Amen. In the name of our great living water, Yeshua HaMashiach.